Hey, it's Marilla Minnelli and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do a full highlight using less than 20 foils to create a gorgeous lived in look using all Kenra color. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a tutorial. Now let's go ahead and get started. I'm beyond excited because my model is actually a virgin. That means she's never had any hair color done before. So she was a little apprehensive about making a big change, which is why we opted in for a lived in look for her hair color. As you can see, she has some pretty dry ends. So I decided to build my house before I went in and started painting it all up. So I just kind of snipped off her ends really quick and then pre-sectioned her for her color application. So I'm keeping this application pretty simple because we're looking to put minimal foils in here, but all over her entire head. So I'm taking my first section right down the middle in the back, and then I'm actually making a zigzag section from the apex all the way down from behind the ear. So you can see these are just four quadrants. I'm gonna be using Beyond Bond Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. I decided to use this lightener because her hair is already pretty light, but I love how gentle and how much light lift we can get from this lightener. So I know her fragile ends are going to be just fine with this lightener. So for her application, I decided to go in with a zigzag section on the top and on the underside and then go ahead and tease that entire slice. I love this type of application because you get a really gorgeous balayage effect, but because we're applying it into a foil, this is going to give me the maximum amount of lightness for this particular application, giving me global coverage, which is amazing. Now, the reason why I decided to go in with a TZ light is because it does give me that rooted effect, also making this look really lived in. And the reason for the zigzag partings is this also adds to that lived in section, especially since we're creating a pretty large slice going on here. And as far as the global application, what happens with these diagonal sections is the way it falls. It gives a very overall brightened look across all of the hair, but without you being able to see stripiness or ribbons throughout the hair. This is just going to look really sun kissed and gorgeous and lived in and simple. Exactly what she wants out of her first time ever coloring her hair. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're only going to be putting in 20 foils, making this application super easy and simple. I'm only going to be putting in three foils on each of the side back quadrants that are diagonal. And then once I have the back completed, I'm then going to start putting in horizontal TZ lights towards that top back section. A couple added tips is you're going to want to use a paddle board when doing this type of application. The board is really the trick and key to allowing you to apply your lightener as a surface application and then you can go through and saturate those mids and ends. So that's exactly why you see me combing that product through on just those mids and ends because I want to make sure that I'm getting that lightener on the back side of that hair. If you want to check out a similar method but an air touch technique, make sure to click the link above and check that video out and let me know what you think. Once I get in those six foils towards the back, now I'm moving towards that top section, working horizontally, creating a pretty deep triangle section right underneath. So this is going to be my depth and you need to have depth in order to have these highlights that you're putting in really stand out and pop. And even though we want these highlights to pop, we're still creating a lived in natural look because of the TZ lights and because of the zigzag partings and because of the application that we're choosing to put in. So I'm only gonna be putting in two foils in this back triangular section and you can see that I'm using this pretty interesting comb. It's by Fermar. The link is in my bio if you wanna get your own, but essentially it weaves it for you and that's exactly what I'm gonna do with this section and then tease it and then apply my lightener. The reason why I chose this particular application versus what we did on the underside 
is because I wanted less of that sliced or brightened effect. I wanted this to be a little bit more subtle. Plus you do have the option when taking thinner sections like this by getting a little closer to the root, even though it's still a teasy light, you're still gonna have that rooted effect, but it's slightly more closer and much more saturated of a blonde because you're using a thinner section. For these side sections, I'm using what we did on the underside for the back. So a zigzag on top and a zigzag on the underside, giving this the most lived in possible effect. The reason for that is because we're not creating straight lines. So you're not going to be able to see a point of origin of where those blonde pieces start and end. So I'm just going to tease that entire section. And because it's a slice, it's going to give me the most brightest pop of blonde possible that I can get into a teasy light. Still using my board and foil, I'm just going to apply from the mids and ends, but because we have a much more den less dense section we're working with, we're still going to get a pretty nice pop of blonde here right in the front. I'm also leaving out that little corner mostly because I still want to make this look really natural. So I want these blonde pieces to really come out within the interior of the head instead of on the hairline and the exterior. This is all about making this really lived in and low maintenance for her, which was super important when we talked during our consultation. I'm gonna do the same exact thing to the other side. So she's gonna have a total of two foils right on the side sections above the ear. And once I have those put in, now I'm gonna to work towards the top. So something to keep in mind is she does have a fringe. So this is gonna change depending on each and every single one of your clients. Some will have fringe and some will not. But one of the things to note is that when your client does have a fringe going on, you want to decide if you want that brightness right onto the hairline or right behind the hairline. For me personally, I love when I have a little bit of background. So I decided to weave on top of my section, leaving just a little bit of hair as my background to make those highlights just pop a little bit more, but still making them look really natural. So I'm only gonna be putting in two highlights with very small baby subsections. And then I just kinda like to see exactly where her hair naturally falls and then decide where I want that transition to start happening when I go into a teasy light. So I'm just gonna weave on my third foil one more time, but still do a slight tease just to start that transition from taking it all the way to the root and going in towards that rooted effect. I would love to know your thoughts on this fringe area. Would you have taken the highlight right onto the hairline or would you leave out a little section how I did for this particular client? Comment down below and let me know what you think. And if you're loving this tutorial so far, make sure to share my content with a friend who would love hair videos and tutorials just like these. If you like the idea of using little foils for a full head of highlights, make sure to check out my other hair tutorial on minimal foils, but with a maximum impact. The link is right at the top of this video. Each of my subsections on the very top section are about half an inch wide, and I'm gonna install less than five foils on the top, making this full application less than 20 foils for a full highlight. I'm going to process her for about 40 minutes and then once she is lifted to the level that we are desiring, which is a level nine, I went ahead and rinsed her out, gave her a really great shampoo and then used pearl detangler right at the bowl with my Fermar detangling brush. This is what I find to be the best solution when doing a teasy light. I get asked this all the time, how do I remove the tangles or that tease once the hair is wet? And honestly, this is the answer. It's either pearl detangler or you can also upcharge your client with nourishing mask or some form of treatment and then go ahead and detangle right at the bowl. A little added tip is to start detangling from the ends and then work your way up towards the root and work section by section until you get all of the hair detangled before moving on to the next step, which is our final toner. So I decided to use a direct dye for this application. I was actually really excited to finally be able to use this direct dye. So this is the Kendrick Creatives in Sandy Beige. And I'm also gonna be using a little bit of honey coral in this formula. So the ratio is 3 4 Sandy Beige to 1 4 of the honey coral. And 
as I started to mix it up, I did add a little bit more honey curl, just a, like a little couple of ribbons of it. And then if you ever want to test out what your direct dye is going to look like, I always take it on my Fermar brush and put it on a foil just so I can kind of see exactly what it's going to look like. The beauty of these is that you can apply these to damp hair for a sheer finish, which is exactly what I was trying to achieve with this application. Now, if you want to get your color on in record time, I'm using the Zero Time System Color Brush, or as I like to call it, the Big Ass Color Brush. The link is in the description if you want to snag up yours. But overall, I got this direct dye onto her roots and her overall entire head. And the beauty of this is that she can really use any type of direct dye anytime she comes back into the salon because we have a really nice level nine base but the sandy beige and honey coral honestly looks so beautiful and so natural and you would never know that it's a direct dye and it just gradually washes out of the hair so that way when she comes back in and she needs a little refresh it's really easy to go in and change it up and customize it to her liking Plus an added bonus is it does fade on tone, which I absolutely love. And there is zero ammonia and zero anything in this product. So this is perfect for somebody that is pretty concerned with too many chemicals going on in their head. They just want something that's gonna lightly stain it. This is the product for them. Little added tip, if you're working with someone who has super compromised hair and it's super damaged, that you don't even want to touch their hair with even a demi-permanent hair color, this direct dye option is perfect for them as well. So the fact that Kenra Color Creatives has this option of a natural shade in a direct dye is simply amazing. So I'm just gonna let this stay on her head for a full 20 minutes right at the bowl. Remember, if you want full saturation, you're gonna want to completely 100% dry the hair and apply this on dry hair and process for the full 20 minutes. And here's the final result of my lived in highlight using all Kenra color. So just to give you a little recap, I went in with Beyond Bond Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer, and then went in with some teasy lights along with some teasy baby lights throughout her entire head and processed her for 40 minutes. After she was done processing, I used Pearl Detangler to detangle her hair right at the bowl and then right on to damp hair using Kenra Color Creative's Sandy Beige with a little bit of Honey Coral and then processed her for 20 minutes. For her final style, I used the Donna Bella Hair Weaver for some added texture and some dry texture spray. So I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial and if you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and be sure to comment down below what your favorite part of this entire tutorial was and I'll be sure to respond. Be sure to find me on my other social channels like Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, all under Morella Manelli. And be sure to check out my other hair tutorials right here on this channel. And for more free education, you can head on over to morellamanelli.com and sign up for my newsletter to get free education right to your inbox. So I hope to see you next time.